So the most recent Nintendo Direct released recently, and it was pretty incredible. There were a lot of fantastic reveals and announcements, with easily the most exciting one for me being Nintendo Switch Sports. But we also got Mario Strikers Battle League, tons of DLC content for Mario Kart 8, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, new info on games like Splatoon 3 and Kirby and the Forgotten Land, and much more. I'm going to go over all of the exciting stuff that happened in this Direct, starting with Switch Sports because I have a lot to say about this game. I seriously doubt I'll be able to cover all of my thoughts in this one video, so I'll probably be making even more content on this game specifically in the future. In case you're new here, Wii Sports is one of my favorite video game franchises of all time. I absolutely adore the first two games, especially Wii Sports Resort. I've made a lot of content about Wii Sports, including a video imagining a Switch Sports Resort, which actually turned out to be kind of true. If you saw my reaction, you'll know that I don't really know how to feel about this game as a whole. On one hand, it's basically a brand new Wii Sports game on Switch, which is like a dream come true for me. But on the other hand, there are some things that I feel pretty mixed on, mainly the lack of Woohoo Island and the total amount of sports. There's a lot to take in here, and I'm already seeing a huge array of strong opinions online. Right off the bat, the first thing you'll notice is that you don't play as your me like you usually would in a Wii Sports game. Instead, they have these new redesigned avatars you play as. But later on in the gameplay segment, they showed off that you can also play as your me, which I'm really glad is included. At first, I was really caught off guard by the new designs, and I'm still not sure if I like them, but I'm not going to totally disregard them right away. And honestly, the more I look at them, the more this new design starts to grow on me. I would probably prefer the game to just use Miis like usual, and these new designs definitely make it feel less like a classic Wii Sports game, which is a bummer. I get that the original Mii designs are probably a little outdated by today's standards, but they could have easily updated their looks while staying closer to the Mii's original look and feel. I haven't really come to one solid opinion on these new avatars yet, and while I am disappointed the Mii's aren't the main focus, I'm still open to learning to love the new style. And again, having the option to use a Mii's face like usual is an amazing option that I'm so happy they included. If this option wasn't in the game, I would probably be a lot harsher on the new designs. The other big thing that stands out to me about this game is the lack of Woohoo Island. This one frustrates me a lot more, because Woohoo Island would literally be the perfect location for this game and would only make even more people interested in this game as a whole. I honestly don't understand why Woohoo Island isn't here, and it brings my overall excitement down a lot. I guess I'll just have to accept that we're never going to get the open world version of Woohoo Island from my dreams. Spoko Square looks pretty fun, but from what I can tell it's basically just a glorified menu screen. I would at least hope this new hub would be fully explorable in a 3D space, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Not including Woohoo Island isn't a total deal breaker for me, but it is pretty disappointing. In total, the game is going to launch with only 6 sports, which is a big downgrade from Wii Sports Resort's 12. I'm really glad to see new sports being added to the series like soccer, but not having golf at launch is really strange. They did announce they would be adding in golf at a later date, and hopefully they continue to update the game with new sports. I don't super love Nintendo's current strategy of releasing content for games after they've already come out, but it is what it is, I guess. I'm also a little concerned about the motion controls and online play, as the Switch doesn't have a great track record with either of those two things. It kind of sounds like I already dislike this game without even playing it, but I promise you that's not true. I'm still beyond excited for this game, and I hope you guys are too. And even if you aren't, that's okay, but you have to admit this is at least a step in the right direction, compared to the horrifically bad Wii Sports Club on Wii U. Trust me, I have a lot more to say about this game, but I'll save that for future videos. I'm going to be making a lot of content on this game before it releases in just a few months, which, by the way, is crazy soon. There's also going to be an online playtest which I'll definitely be checking out and giving my impressions on. Anyways, that's enough Switch Sports talk for now, because there were plenty of other great announcements in this Direct. So probably the next most exciting thing in this Direct was the huge amount of DLC for Mario Kart 8. I absolutely love Mario Kart, and although this isn't as exciting as a Mario Kart 9 would be, we're getting a whopping 48 new remastered courses from past games, which is basically a new game's worth of content. Seeing Coconut Mall in full HD in the Mario Kart 8 engine is just amazing, and I can't wait to see the total amount of courses once this booster pass is completed. It may not be a brand new Mario Kart, but hopefully this huge amount of extra DLC content can hold us over until the next proper entry into the series. Sticking with the Mario news, we also got the announcement of Mario Strikers Battle League, which is insanely exciting. Out of all the Mario sports games, Mario Strikers has always been my favorite, so I can't wait for this new game. I was slightly underwhelmed by Mario Tennis Aces and Mario Golf Super Rush, but this game looks like it has a lot more personality and charm, and I'm guessing it's developed by Next Level Games who are super talented people. This will probably end up being my favorite Mario sports game on Switch. 
Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was the big final reveal of the Direct, and I'm not really sure how I feel about this one. I'm a big fan of the original Xenoblade Chronicles, but I really don't like the direction the series went in with the sequel. I'm super glad this game isn't a direct follow-up to Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and it definitely has a better overall vibe for me. I'm just not sure if I'll be able to enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the original. Although the character designs seem to be a lot better this time around which I'm grateful for. I'll say I'm cautiously optimistic for Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and that's about all I can hope for since the series changed so much with the second game. It's releasing in September of this year, and I'm looking forward to learning more about it. We also got new looks at Kirby and the Forgotten Land and Splatoon 3, and they both look great. Kirby got the more substantial trailer, showing off even more of the game. With every new trailer this game just looks better and better. It looks like it has the potential to be one of my favorite 3D platformers. I also love how ridiculous Kirby looks when he eats an entire car and starts to control it. I'm really excited to play this game next month. Splatoon 3 got a new trailer for its new Salmon Run mode, which didn't really show off anything too exciting. There are some new Salmon Run bosses that look cool, but honestly it just kind of looks like Splatoon 2 gameplay which is a little concerning. Let's hope the story mode and multiplayer do enough to separate it from the second game and make it feel more fresh and original. I'm still super excited for this game, don't get me wrong, but this trailer just wasn't the most mind-blowing thing for Splatoon. There were some really cool third-party games announced like the first two Portal games coming to Switch and No Man's Sky another Fire Emblem Warriors game, a difficulty update for Metroid Dread, and some other stuff like this Disney kart racing thing. But the last really exciting thing for me is that they're finally adding Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings to Nintendo Switch Online, which is long overdue and I'm glad it finally happened. I've been holding off on playing these games for a while hoping they would come to the Switch, and now that they have I can finally play them for myself. And that's everything that interested me in the February 2022 Direct. Obviously the most exciting reveal for me was Nintendo Switch Sports, and I still have a lot more to say about that game in particular. But with other amazing announcements like Mario Strikers finally coming back, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC, Xenoblade 3 looking like a step in the right direction, and even more awesome stuff, I think it's safe to say this Nintendo Direct was pretty dang awesome. I'm a tiny bit biased since Switch Sports was basically a dream come true, even if it isn't exactly what I hoped for. But I do think overall this Direct had a lot of great stuff to be excited for. And that's pretty much all my thoughts on the Direct, so I'll wrap this one up. But stay tuned for more Nintendo Switch Sports content in the future. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see ya in the next one.